bubbling epoxy is the subject of today's video this is an area I have talked about in the past but I'm gonna talk about it again because it's very important and I'm gonna start with a picture you may have seen before this is a picture of little pinholes in an epoxy floor after the completion and just to give an idea one more picture from a different project again little holes basically bubbles that were formed during the uh, casting of the epoxy and then we're left with these pinholes ugly looking pinholes that pick up dirt and in this um, presentation I want to look at the seven reasons I have identified of why we get bubbles and pinholes and before I go into the seven reasons I just want to emphasize something very very important and that is that the bubbles are formed during the mixing and the curing phase of the epoxy some people mistakenly say the bubbles showed up afterwards the hole showed up after the floor had dried that doesn't happen they may become visible after the floor has dried but they actually are formed during the mixing during the liquid phase of the epoxy they, are, they do not appear afterwards very important point and the number one reason the most important reason and the most common reason I found is a porous substrate so when you are applying epoxy on like dusty porous substrates you are more likely to get holes and bubbles and pinholes Here's an example of a rough substrate. And here's an example where one of our workers is priming a rough cement substrate. You will find that if he applies now epoxy on this, he will get bubbles. You need to apply several layers of epoxy to, in order to prevent bubbles. Um, throughout this presentation, I am focusing on bubbles in self-leveling flooring because, or in higher thickness flooring because that's where it's most common, these bubbles. So if you want to prevent bubbles here on such a substrate you want to have at least two layers of cement uh, two layers of primer on top of the cement to make sure it's really well sealed because otherwise you will get bubbles and as I say here apply a double primer or an additional base coat before you apply the self-leveling epoxy second most common reason um, and a reason uh, in general a um, common cause of problems in epoxies is moisture and humidity here's an example of a moist floor um, if you were to apply epoxy on this try to fix this you would get bubbles in the floor on the on the new coating here is a picture of bubbles but this is a different case this is actually not an epoxy floor this is a polyurethane floor and what happened here was the moisture attacked the polyurethane and you get these bubbles that look more like warts they're not like your typical bubbles that I showed in previous pictures these look more like warts um, very common problem with polyurethane to get these types of bubbles and this uh, third picture here is a bit of a disaster story what happened here was we'd finished casting the epoxy then it rained unfortunately the building wasn't very well uh, let's say it wasn't very well waterproofed and water got into the building it came down the walls and it flooded the epoxy and you get these stains like these these marks not exactly bubbles or holes but they're just like like water water stains that basically we needed to recoat this to fix it now the third reason um, and this is one of those reasons that I actually learned from the, you guys the, the the readers and the visitors to this uh, YouTube channel is slab expansion um, this is a very interesting concept and this is um, basically concrete has a tendency to expand as the heat rises which means if you apply early in the morning the concrete will heat up during the day because of the sunshine and that could lead to air being released from the concrete causing bubbles in the epoxy um, therefore very good advice is don't apply epoxy early in the morning it's much better to apply it around noon or later on in the day um, and this is what I'm emphasizing here don't apply early in the morning I know I mean even myself that sometimes the way your schedule is you need to apply early in the morning um, sometimes you can't help it but I have noticed you tend to get better results if you apply the epoxy midday rather than early in the morning now number four very important point um, and one of the reasons you get bubbles and that is sloppy work or inexperienced workers come get bubbles all the time now if you're going to be applying self-leveling epoxy I assume you will have spiked shoes and a spiked roller 
if you don't have them, don't start. I mean, I'm serious. Why do people think they can apply a self-leveling and manage it without having a spiked roller and spiked shoes? You must have spiked shoes to access the entire area to inspect it and have a spiked roller to be able to burst if any bubbles show up. Here's one example. Here's an example of a spiked roller that is not in good condition. Very, very important to have clean spiked rollers. You don't want to have them worn out or, like in this case, a spiked roller with debris stuck in it. You want clean spiked rollers. And once again, I'm emphasizing, use spiked shoes and a spiked roller. You want good lighting. You want the worker inspecting the entire area of the floor. Now, number five reason is excessive solvent. Um, very important point that when we apply self-leveling epoxies, you do not want to be using epoxies that contain solvents or many solvents. Uh, and the reason is because solvents, once we apply them, they evaporate and they leave air bubbles behind. So if this is going to be a very thin coat, that's fine because you can the, the bubbles will evaporate. But if you're applying a thick coat, that solvent is going to be released slowly and you will get bubbles. And the worst part is you won't get them straight away. You'll get them after two hours. And by that time, it's no longer you can no longer access the epoxy because it's starting to dry, but you're still getting bubbles, which is like a nightmare scenario. Not being able to access the epoxy and seeing bubbles emerge. In fact, this has happened to me. To uh, leave a floor looking great, the next day you come back and it's full of bubbles and you wonder what happened. Um, so very, very important. You do not want to be adding any solvents to your epoxy, or if you do, add the minimum required amount just to, if you need to get improve the flow of your epoxy. But... Always remember, solvents do leave air bubbles when they evaporate. So you want to avoid them because this is a cause of this is a cause of bubbles in the epoxy. Now, the sixth reason, high speed power mixing. I'm always preaching the importance of mixing your epoxy, your A and your B component. This is very important. And here we see someone mixing epoxy. But what I also want to emphasize is you don't want to be using a very, very high speed mixer because the higher the speed, the more bubbles are generated. Epoxy should be mixed slowly. So you should have a, a, the mixer at a low speed, about 300 RPMs, and it's more important to mix it slowly and for a long period of time to get a uniform mix rather than mixing it really quickly. When you mix it really quickly, you just fill up all these bubbles and even though, if, even if you think you can burst the bubbles with the spiked roller, it's not that easy to burst them all. You want to minimize the emergence of bubbles in the mix in the mixture, so then you have less work to do when you are applying the spiked roller. So adjust the speed of the mixture to 300 RPMs. And one seventh, a final reason I have noticed, and that is problems with the product in itself. We're seeing. Lots of new products, lots of new companies that are not very experienced in making epoxies coming out with epoxy products. We're seeing many applicators buying the raw material, going straight to the supplier of the raw material, buying the A and the B component, and kind of mixing them together, the products, and expecting to get a good result. But here's a thing, here's something you may not know, but all good epoxy flooring products contain additives. They contain chemicals that make that enable degassing. So they, they, they contain chemicals that allow don't allow the formation of bubbles when the product is being made. This is very important because what I'm seeing now is many people think they can just buy a raw a raw material or they can buy like a cheap product that does not contain additives, and then they're wondering why it's creating so many bubbles. And one of the reasons is it's because it's low quality product. So if you are going to use raw material epoxy resins, do not use them without the proper formulation. Very, very important. Don't just assume you can buy a barrel from like a chemical raw material supplier and you've got your epoxy. You need to have the right additives in place. Very important point that many people are overlooking. And having said that, don't assume that just because a product contains additives that you have you won't get any bubbles. Bubbles are formed both during the application process but also during the formulation of the product. So those were our seven reasons. Now if you enjoyed this presentation please take a moment and like it, share it, comment. It really helps us. It helps us spread the word. Also please check out our online learning course. 
it's at a very low cost and you'll learn lots and lots of stuff. You'll get much more information like the one I showed you today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to visit our websites to learn more. And I'm going to post some links right below in the comment section. So please go to the links now and click on them and uh, we will take you wherever you want. Whether you need products or you want to learn more about our uh, articles. Here we are. And remember, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe.